So in reality, a lot of people get rid of old laptops all the time and then spend thousands of dollars buying a new laptop and all they really needed was to upgrade from their old spinning disk hard drive to an SSD. SK Hynix, let's talk about why I'm using these guys right now for just a minute. They are the second largest global manufacturer of memory in the world. They've been doing this stuff for like 36 years. They haven't been in the retail SSD market for quite a while. They, they make OEM stuff, meaning that you know, if you have a laptop, if you have a desktop, even some RAM from a major company, if you remove the cover, remove the heat spreader, remove the shield or whatever, you might see the words SK Hynix on that product, especially if it's like a performance product. So I just got in the SK Hynix Gold S31 SSD, and this, this is not going to be for someone who's going to run, you know, 5 M.2 because those are slightly faster. But for people who have a laptop that's a few years old and your only option is SATA, great way to go. And also, even if you have a brand new gaming laptop, a lot of times those will come with Windows pre-installed on an M.2. A lot of times you'll have a second storage drive that's like a, you know, a one terabyte or a two terabyte spinning disk hard drive. And every time you click on it, you have to like go get a sandwich because it's like, I'm spinning, I'm trying. You can still replace that slow drive with one of these and have this be your data drive. So whether it's your OS or your data drive, it's gonna be a good upgrade for your laptop. One of the things that really keeps people from doing this is not necessarily the inability to unscrew a few things on the laptop. The big problem is usually moving all your stuff, like your Windows installation. You don't wanna reinstall Windows and then reinstall all your applications and you've got specific settings and your documents folder and all that stuff. So what SK Hynix has done, they work together with Macrium Software to bring you their data migration tool. It's based on Macrium Reflect and it makes moving windows from one drive to the other extremely easy. We're talking like a few clicks, and then you can just replace your old hard drive with one of these and be done with it. When you power back on, it's gonna be like, hey, it's my old system, except way faster. Now, the next hurdle for a lot of people is the fact that their laptop only has one hard drive slot, one spot where you can put a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. So you're like, well, I can't have them both plugged up at the same time. So I guess I'm just defeated. Problem solved right here. This was this was seven dollars, guys. This is a USB 3 to SATA connector from Severant. It was really cheap, and it's you just plug it into your USB 3 port, plug in the other end of the dongle to your drive, and there's no moving parts in an SSD, so you don't have to worry about it being jostled around or vibrations are not going to kill this like they will a regular old school spinning disk hard drive. So you just plug this in and then boot into Windows and it's really simple. Once you're finished, remove the old hard drive, pop this one in, turn it on and you're done. I have the Lenovo Legion. I'm going to use that to do all my capture because this Legion gaming laptop is so freaking fast. We've got a GTX 2070 in here. Um, and like I said, it doesn't necessarily need the upgrade, but it's going to be fast enough for me to uh, use for capture to do the tutorial and that sort of thing. So I'm using that one here. And it also, you know, if you have a gaming laptop that has a regular hard drive, go ahead and switch it out for, you know, a one terabyte SSD. You'll be very happy that you did. I also want to look at an older laptop, a few years old, that's still in service in a lot of different places. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad T440p, and it's going to be similar to a lot of the older ThinkPads on the market and even some of the newer ThinkPads. Now, this one is extremely easy to work on. You just remove the back and you can see there we have one spot for a, a two and a half inch hard drive. You'll want to look at the manual and you can find that online if you don't have it you know handy somewhere look at the manual to to figure out exactly how to remove the hard drive on your specific laptop but removing the hard drive is almost always the easiest upgrade it's they make it very very easy in almost every laptop if your laptop's difficult then where, where did you buy your laptop? If you're curious on how to work with the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad T440p, there's going to be a link in the top of the description where I actually upgrade every part of this laptop. You can use that as a guide to figure out how to upgrade your SSD. One other thing I want to mention is a lot of laptops that have optical drives, that's like a DVD, Blu-ray, whatever, CD drive, if it's that old. If you have an optical drive, well, a lot of times you can get a caddy that will replace the entire optical drive. The optical drives are usually just a big caddy that slides in and out really easy. You remove a couple screws and you can slide it out of most laptops. Typically, you can replace your optical drive with a caddy that will house an SSD like this. So you just pop the SSD in the caddy, slide it in, and you're good to go. Now, every, again, every laptop is going to be a little different. So if you have, you know, a Dell or something like that, go ahead and search, you know, for the Dell model number and then type in you know, optical hard drive caddy or optical bay caddy, or just type in a few different things and you'll usually find one that's specifically for your system. 
So I can't guarantee that it's going to work because I haven't tried every laptop on the planet. I'm only one dude and I've got a lot of stuff to do. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and plug up the hard drive to the USB 3 because that's just the easiest way to do it, plugging it up this way. Uh, we're going to boot into Windows and then I'm going to show you how to use the data migration tool to move everything over from your main C drive over to the new drive. And then we're just going to replace the other drive and be happy that it's so much faster. If you've already messed with this, it'll show up right here. But as you can see, this is our main drive and our data drive. The SSD is not showing up. Where is it? Well, you have to initialize it first by right clicking on this PC. And in order to get to that, you could just hit start and type this PC and then click on it. So it's very easy. Right click on this PC and then click on manage. Once that's open, click on disk management and it'll list all your disks and it'll find the SSD that's plugged in. So since we've never used the SSD before, the SK Hynix will say, hi, here I am. And then Windows will be like, oh, there's a drive here. So you can go ahead and initialize the disk. There it is. Uh, we're going to do GPT. MBR is something you would have needed a long time ago, but go ahead and hit GPT, hit OK. And then, hey, look at that, unallocated space. You guys don't actually need to allocate this. If you wanted to use this as a storage drive, just go ahead right now and hit new simple volume and all the defaults should be just fine. You can name the drive. You can just do defaults. You can give the drive a drive letter, and then you can also name the drive here, whatever you want to call it, SK, Hynix, whatever. You know, NTFS is what you want to do, not EXFAT, and use the default allocation size. That'll just make this a hard drive that you can use for whatever. Uh, you guys can do this if you wanted to, but it's not necessary for our next step. So, so the next thing you want to do is head over to ssd.skhynix.com, and all the way down at the bottom, there's a link for the data migration tool. You click on that and you can install it. Your data migration tool is really simple to use. All you have to do is just pick your source drive and then it's going to ask you to select your source to clone to. There you pick your SK Hynix and make sure you've picked that. And then it's just going to ask you several times, are you sure? So just tell it, yes, I'm sure I know what I'm doing and go ahead and click clone. This may take a few minutes. So just sit back, relax, have a cup of coffee or something and come back in a little bit. Using the USB drive may produce an error where the data migration tool looks at this and says, okay, I see some USB thing, but it doesn't look like the SK Hynix. We could just go use the program that this is based on, Macrium Reflect. So go over here and click on, you know, home use. You don't have to enter your email address. You can just download it, which is nice. There we go. We'll go ahead and download Reflect, which is the same thing as the data migration tool. And this is only something you're going to need if your computer... Uh, looks at the USB drive and says, I don't see the SK Hynix drive. If you have it plugged into your system or if you're using it in any other way, or maybe your computer might just recognize it. So there we have Reflect, and we're going to go ahead and install that. Bring up our installation wizard. Just go ahead and pick the free edition, and then I'll just throw in the downloads. That's fine. Go to go ahead and download the newest version of the installer. Reflect 7, I'm just going to install into the default folder because once I get this installed on the new machine or once I get the hard drive swapped, I'll just remove it. Use it for home. Using it for commercial, you have to pay. I'm not going to register for an account. And sure, what the hell. All right, look at this. There is our SK Hynix drive right there. Now, Macrium Reflect is a little more, little more complicated than just using the data migration tool from SK Hynix, but it is the same software on the back end. So I'm going to go ahead and find our primary hard drive. Sometimes you'll see this, the, the disk that's the first on the list. It says primary, but don't be confused. That's not the Windows drive. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, depending on how they installed everything. Take a look at this. Your Windows drive right here is the one with the little Windows icon. That's how you know which one you're copying. So you want to select this one and then clone this disk. It's going to clone the entire structure, all these little partitions. This is like your, your primary partition. There's your Windows drive. It's, everything's right here. So we're going to hit clone this disk and then it's going to be like, okay, which disk do you want to clone it to? Select a disk to clone to. So here's your local. All that's going to be copied over to right here, SK Hynix. There we go. I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to do this right now. So this is in case you're cloning like 10 different drives. If you've got an office or something, you can just keep unplugging and plugging up new drives and then cloning them. But we don't need to save this. We're just going to run this back up right now. And it's going to warn you, hey... So make sure that it's correct. We're good. It's all good. Check mark and confirm and hey, we're cloning. Remember one thing, this is going to be based upon the speed of your old hard drive. So if it takes a very long time, that's not the S31 Gold's fault. That is the fault of your old spinning disk hard drive. But remember, this is the last time 
you're gonna have to suffer through uh, using a slow hard drive. Okay, so once it's finished, your new drive should just pop up on the screen like, hey, look at this. It may or may not, but all this stuff popped up. That's our SSD right there. It says it completed in five minutes. That's because I'm copying from a very fast old hard drive to a new hard drive. Yours is probably gonna take 15, 20, 30 minutes. So don't worry if it's taken a, you know, up to an hour, if, if it's a large hard drive and then really slow, don't worry about it, let it do its thing because like I said, this is the last time you're ever gonna have to mess with this. Turn off your laptop, remove your battery, always remove your battery, and then swap out your old hard drive for your new SK Hynix S31 Gold and then be happy. And then when you reboot, it's gonna be Windows and it's gonna be way faster. So we got that installed, we turn it on and Windows logo, guys, we did it. Your SK Hynix is now your C drive. So good job. So there you have it. If you guys wanna see the full review, on this S31 Gold from SK Hynix. Go ahead and look for the link. It's in the top of the description. I do all the benchmarks and just talk about a little bit about the company and, and what they're doing with this SSD right here. They've, they've created everything in-house, which is really nice. They created the, the memory in-house. They created the controller in-house. They created the housing. Just, and it's nice to have one company working on all the different parts. Also, if you guys are curious on how to do this for a desktop, well, I made a video on that as well. We show how to do it with an Office desktop and also the Lenovo Legion uh, gaming desktop right here. So you guys can go watch that video. All these links are going to be in the top of the description. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments. If you're someone who's new to the channel or whatever, a lot of the members of our audience are going to pop in here and be like, hey, I can help. So there's a, they're really helpful. And they a lot of the guys know more than I do. So if they see the question and they answer, thanks very much, guys. And if I can jump in there and help you guys out, I will. See you guys in the comments. And also be sure to check out our t-shirts over at epicpants.com. See you guys later.